Hello from Seoul. Today, we are making one of the best fried chickens in the world, KFC. Can't get fried chicken? No, it's Korean fried chicken. All right, are you guys ready? Let's get started. There are so many great fried chicken in the world, but I'm pretty sure you guys all agree this Korean fried chicken is one of the best. So today, I'm gonna show you three different versions of Korean fried chicken, which are the most popular in Korea. And with these recipes, you may not wanna go to Korea town anymore. All right, let's start with chicken moo, Korean pickled radish. If you have Korean fried chicken without this pickled radish, your brain will say something is missing, even though you love that. Yes, it's that important. So I'm gonna show you a super simple version. For this, you will need radish. Yeah, that's it. But it should be this kind of Korean radish or daikon. So don't even think about using a regular radish. If you make it with normal radish, it will taste bitter or weird. I told you. So if you get dumped by your girlfriend or boyfriend because you serve that weird stuff, I'm not responsible. First, cut 400 grams of radish into nice little cubes. About half an inch on each side will be perfect. To pickle this radish in a small container, put one cup of water, one cup of white vinegar, and half a cup of Sprite. And lastly, we have to use this new sugar for restaurant taste. So please add one tablespoon of it. Trust me, without this, you never get the taste that you might have had at Korean restaurants. At this point, some of you might think, what the heck is that? Well, it's basically the same as sweet and low that you might have seen at coffee house. And if you go to Korean supermarkets, you can easily get this and it's less than a dollar. So please ask you will see a whole new world. Unlike your expectations, we're not gonna bring this to a boil. So once it's all combined, pour the liquid over your radish. Once that's done, cover it the lid and keep this in the fridge for at least half a day. Then you can enjoy that amazing pickled radish. Now, let's work on the chicken. Normally, for Korean fried chicken, we use a whole chicken. But to keep it simple, I'm gonna go with drumsticks. But depending on your preference, you can also go with chicken wings, breast, or even thighs. So just just use what you have in your fridge. That's the best. For Korean fried chicken, brining is the most important part. So let's make a brine for our chicken. Put a half tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of onion powder, a half tablespoon of cayenne pepper, one tablespoon of vinegar, some black pepper, three cups of water, and give that a good mix. And then into this brine, add in the chicken and mix it around. Now keep this in the fridge for at least three hours to overnight. Then you're gonna meet the best Korean fried chicken ever. What? You can't wait that long? Don't worry about it. As always, let me save your time. So this time, right onto the chicken, put 1 teaspoon of salt, 1 teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 teaspoon of onion powder, 1 teaspoon of chicken bouillon powder, some black pepper, a half teaspoon of MSG, and just give it a good massage. With this method, 30 minutes will be enough. So even if you have a scary hangry bird at home, like me, don't worry about it. This is gonna be your lifesaver. Next, let's talk about the batter. In Korean supermarkets or Amazon, they sell this amazing stuff, which is called Korean chicken fry mix. And with this bad boy, you can get the beautiful restaurant quality fried chicken. What? You can get this? Then combine 2 cups of cake flour, 1 cup of potato starch, and a pinch of salt. As long as you keep this ratio, you'll be fine. So don't worry about it. In a separate bowl, add 1 cup of chicken powder mix, 1 cup of cold water, and give that a good whisk. And then into this batter, just add all the chicken and stir them around to get them nice and coated. Once that's done, take out a large food container that has a lid and put 2 cups of chicken powder mix and spread it out. After that, place your chicken one by one and make sure they don't stick together. Now, all you gotta do is just sprinkle some more powder over your chicken and shake it. That's it. What? You don't have a container like this? Then just put them in a large plastic bag and do the same thing. That will totally work. 
Alright, our chicken is ready to be fried. Let's get cooking. Fill up the pot with enough oil and heat it to 170 degrees Celsius or 340 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reaches the temperature, carefully drop it in. And we're gonna fry them for 5 minutes. Depending on the size of your pot or the amount of your chicken, it's okay to do this in batches. So no problem at all. When time's up, take them out and let them rest just a little bit. What? It doesn't look like the one from Korean restaurants? Don't worry about it. They're not fully cooked yet. We still have some journey ahead of us. So to get them nice and golden, let's do the second fry. Change the heat to medium high heat and wait until it reaches 180 degrees Celsius or 355 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reaches the temperature, add in the chicken all at once and let them fry for another 4 to 5 minutes or until golden brown. Trust me, this secret double fry technique will bring it to the next level. Alright, looks like it's done. Let's take them out and let it rest on a cooling rack. This way, the excess oil will drain off and give you that light and crispy texture. After that, just transfer it to a serving plate. How does it look? It looks absolutely delicious, right? Alright, let's go to our taste tester. Claire? Woo! Korean fried chicken! Who can say no to Korean fried chicken? Definitely not me! Bikkal <laughs> 봐라! 완벽한 골드 브라운이네. 보기만 해도 벌써 바삭한 게 느껴진다. 한번 먹어볼까? Look at this crispy batter. Ready? Wow, looks super juicy and tender. 겉에 반죽이 너무 너무 바삭해서 약간 과자 먹는 느낌이야 거의 그 수준으로 엄청 바삭바삭거려. 그리고 따로 소금이나 그런 거에 찍어 먹지 않아도 될 정도로 간이 완벽하게 잘 뱉네. 음 맛있다. This time, let me try the beauty of Korean fried chicken. This pickled radish. 얼마나 잘했는지 보겠어. 음 기가 막히게 똑같은 사이즈로 잘 만들었네. 음, 음 let's see. <laughs> Let me try it. Mmm. <laughs> wow. Mm. Wow. 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 똑같다. 음, 크리스피하고 맛있고 다 좋은데 그래도 치킨은 반반이 국물 아니야? 양념 치킨을 가져와라. <laughs> As Claire says, to fully enjoy this, we need that beautiful signature Korean fried chicken sauce. So using this Korean chili paste and soy sauce, let me show you two types of sauces. I think the owners of Korean fried chicken places are really gonna hate me. So you guys have to protect me, alright? The first one is the red spicy sauce. In a mixing bowl, put 1 and a half tablespoons of Korean chili paste, 5 tablespoons of ketchup, 2 tablespoons of soy sauce, 2 tablespoons of Korean chili pepper flakes, 3 tablespoons of sugar, 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, 8 tablespoons of corn syrup, 3 tablespoons of water, and give it a good mix. Now pour that into a nasty pan and bring it to a boil over medium heat for about 3 to 4 minutes. Yes, we could have just added to the pan, but don't worry about it. Claire's gonna do the dishes. Once it comes to a boil, turn the heat off. That's it. So easy, right? Now, depending on your preference, you can serve it in a separate bowl and dip it in the sauce. But let me show you the authentic way. Pour the sauce all over the chicken and gently coat them with the sauce thoroughly. Yeah, this is the stuff. Now, all you need to do is transfer it to a serving plate and finish it up with any kind of crushed nuts you like. Alright, it's done. Let's see how it tastes. Claire? <gasps> oh my gosh! Look at how gorgeous! I love little details here! <laughs> Let me grab one. <laughs> Ooh, look at how gorgeous! Sticky sauce! Wow! Mm. Okay, let me try it. Mm. 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 입에 잔뜩 묻어졌을 것 같아. 이거 먹을 땐 예쁜 건 살짝 포기하고 먹어야 될것 같아. <웃음> 맛있는 걸 어떡해. 
그냥 포기하고 먹어야지. <웃음> You may think it's too spicy because of the color, but actually it's not. So don't worry about it. I'm sure you can handle it. So please give it a try. So good. The next one is honey soy sauce. In a small container, put 4 tablespoons of soy sauce, 6 tablespoons of honey, 1 tablespoon of oyster sauce, 1 tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, half a cup of water, 1 dry chili, and give it a good stir. Again, place it over medium heat. And once it comes to a boil, it's done. Just like the spicy one, you can put the chicken in a bowl and toss them in the sauce. But if possible, I highly recommend using a brush this time. Because this way, it's gonna stay crispy for a long time. Alright, it's done. Let's go to our taste tester. Claire? <laughs> 그래, 치킨 and 맥주지. Now we can talk. <laughs> 아까도 줬어야지. 에이, 정말. <laughs> I'm so ready. Let me try. 어째 더 맛있어 보이는 것 같다. 통통이 들고. 음, 음, 음. 와, 육즙 폭발이다. 음, 음, 음. 와, 진짜 맛있다. 소스가 간장 소스이긴 한데 너무 과하지 않고 되게 잘 어울리네. 세이브리 향 맛도 나는데 약간의 그 꿀의 향도 나는 것 같고 치킨이랑 너무 잘 어울려. 사실 첫 번째 치킨도 그냥 먹기에 너무 완벽한 간이었거든? 그래서 혹시라도 이 소스를 하면 좀 짜지는 거 아닌가 생각은 했거든. 근데 전혀 그렇지 않네. 어. You know what? I've been waiting for this. This whole entire time. Cheers! I think Aaron stole some of it. <웃음> We are making two classic chicken dishes. Jimtak, Korean soy sauce braised chicken, and takbokkumtang, spicy braised chicken. Now, I've given you two great options, so all you need to do is just pick the one and run to your kitchen. But make sure to hit the like button before you do that. Thank you in advance. Alright, let's start with jimtak first. For this, you will need a whole chicken, green onion, potato, carrot, onion, glass noodles, and some dried chilies. Even if you don't like spicy food, these bad boys gotta be used in this recipe. And that makes your dish taste gourmet. So unless you're allergic to chili peppers, I highly recommend using it. First, let's soak the thick glass noodles in cold water. If they just go straight into a pot, they're gonna soak up all the sauce in there, and you'll be left with very very dry chicken, like a desert. So make sure to soak them in water for at least 30 minutes. This is very important. Next, let's make the sauce. In a small container, combine 4 tablespoons of soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of oyster sauce, 3 tablespoons of sugar, 1 tablespoon of corn syrup, 2 tablespoons of mirin, 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, 1 tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, 1 tablespoon of dark soy sauce, and give it a good mix. That's it. But by any chance, if you want to get that restaurant taste, not homemade style, say the name of our secret weapon. MSG and add a half a teaspoon of it. I won't say this is necessary, but if you feel like it's missing something because you skipped this, I'm not responsible. This time, cut 150 grams of green onions into long strips. Just like any good Korean dish, it'll be like more green onion, more delicious, so be super generous with this. And then chop an onion into nice big chunks. And cut two potatoes, some carrots into nice bite-sized pieces. Here, the carrot is mainly for color, so if you don't have it, you can skip it. But 
make sure to include the potatoes. The starch from the potatoes will thicken up the sauce and help it stick to the chicken. You don't have potatoes? Don't worry about it. You can use sweet potatoes. No problem at all. This time, let's talk about the chicken. I'm gonna be using a whole chicken that's been cut up into small pieces. But if it's difficult to get this, just use chicken thighs or breast. No problem at all. But just so you know, all the good flavors come out of the bones. So there's gonna be a difference in taste. Now blanch the chicken in hot water for 5 minutes. At this point, some of you might say, Aaron, what are you doing? You're gonna lose all the good flavor. Mm. I'm so glad you brought that up. The truth is, you're not gonna lose any flavor, but you're just gonna get rid of all the impurities and odors. So don't worry about it. You'll get a better result. Alright, once that's done, give it a good rinse on the cold water. Now, into a wok or pot, add in your chicken, the sauce, 5 to 7 dried chilies, 2 cups of water, and bring it to a boil over high heat. Once it starts to bubble, reduce the heat to medium high and simmer for 10 minutes. After that, reduce the heat to medium and add in your potatoes and carrots. After 5 minutes, or once the veggies are halfway cooked, add in the onions, half of the green onions, glass noodles, and let it cook for another 10 minutes. So simple, right? Now, let's turn the heat off and add the rest of the green onions and drizzle 1 tablespoon of sesame oil. Now, all you need to do is just toss them around. That's it. But if you want to make it more beautiful, add some mild chilies or bell peppers. See? It looks way better, right? Alright, it's almost done. Transfer it to a serving plate and finish it off with a generous amount of toasted sesame seeds. How does it look? It looks absolutely delicious, right? Alright, let's cut our taste tester. Claire? Wow! All the vegetables and sesame seeds, they make a beautiful presentation! I can't wait to try! I'm gonna add more of that sauce. Ooh. Oh my gosh! Ready? Mmm, 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 from chili peppers. Mmm, super addictive. 그리고 뭐니 뭐니 해도 찜닭이는 당면이지. <웃음> Let's try the glass noodles. It looks divine. Mmm. 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 엄청 쫄깃쫄깃하고 탱글탱글. 미쳤어 미쳤어. 와, 이 맛에 찜닭 먹지. I think it makes it super addictive. Mm. 내가 만약 식감을 정말 중요시 여기는 사람이다. 무조건 넣어야 돼. It's necessary. 이 정도면 팔아도 되겠다. <웃음> This time, let's make takbokkumtang, which is an arch rival of soy sauce braised chicken. If the first one is super addictive because of its sweet and savory flavor, this one will make you fall in love with its unique spiciness so you can get excited. For this, you will need a whole chicken, onion, green onion, potato, carrot, and chili peppers. It's pretty simple, right? But if you want to upgrade it, then get yourself a little bit of Korean rice cake. If I say the glass noodles are the beauty of Jimtak, this bad boy will be the hero here. Alright, let's prep some vegetables. Just like before, chop some green onion into nice big chunks. I'm gonna use about 100 grams. Next, chop an onion into nice bite-sized pieces. Again, if they're too small, they will go mushy as they cook. So just roughly chop them. And then, potatoes. Take 3 potatoes and cut them in half, like this. Once that's done, cut some carrot into nice bite-sized pieces. This time, chili peppers. In Korea, there are many types of chili peppers, but this bad boy is super super spicy. So I'm gonna use too. Yeah, that's the spirit. But if you can't take spicy so much, you can skip it. No problem at all. Now let's move on to the seasoning paste. In a small container, combine 4 tablespoons of Korean chili pepper flakes, 2 tablespoons of sugar, 1.5 tablespoons of soy sauce, 1 tablespoon of oyster sauce, 1 tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, 1 tablespoon of tashida, Korean beef stock powder, 1 tablespoon of corn syrup, 1 tablespoon of minced garlic, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and a half teaspoon of MSG. As I said earlier, 
here, this MSG is optional. But if I don't put this here, Claire could say the first one is way better because of this teeny tiny amount of MSG. So in order to be objective, I can't help it. Again, blanch your chicken for 5 minutes and rinse them on the cold water. Well, if your chicken is really really fresh, you can skip this step. But this little detail will give you a better result. So I highly recommend doing this. Now take out a wok or a pot. Add in the drained chicken, potatoes, sauce, 2 and a half cups of water and place it over a high heat. Once it starts to boil, reduce it down to a medium high and let it simmer for 12 minutes. And during the simmer, make sure to stir it occasionally so that they don't stick on the bottom. If you smell smoke in your kitchen because you didn't take my advice, I'm not responsible. Now at this point, some of you might want to ask, Aaron, you're not gonna use gochujang, Korean chili paste? Of course you could add it, but it's way better without gochujang because without it, it's gonna taste more delicate. And for information, that's the restaurant's secret. So take some notes. You're welcome. Alright, let's reduce it down to a medium and add in our onions, carrots, and give it a quick stir. Keep adding half a cup of water, a handful of rice cakes and simmer for another 5 minutes. Once the rice cakes are cooked through, add in your green onions, chili peppers, and let it all cook together for about 3 minutes. That's it! For information, if you transfer it to a white pot and serve it on a portable stove, that's the best. But since Hungry Claire is staring at me, let's skip that part. I don't wanna die today. Alright, let's see how it tastes. Claire? If I didn't know the taste of jimda, and if you ask me, why would you like to try the first one or this one? I would definitely pick this one. Why? Because to me, red always looks more appetizing. <laughs> Let's give it a try. 이번에도 역시 공정하게 닭다리살을 먹어보겠다. 뭔가 와 국물이 진짜 진해 보이는 게꼭 그냥 국물 색깔만 봤었을 때는 고추장찌개, 고추장찌개 색깔 같아. 예이. Ready? 음. 음, 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 음. Again, it's super juicy and tender and bounce at the same time. Perfectly cooked. <웃음> 근데 재밌는 건 이게 훨씬 매워 보이잖아. 근데 아깝게 조금 더 매워. 신기하다. 진짜 재밌다. <웃음> it's not that spicy as it looks, so you'll be fine. Don't be afraid. 찜닭에 당면이 있다면 닭볶음탕에 감자가 있지. Let's try the potato. 국물 한번 끼얹고 뚜루루 음. 어마무시하게 크구만 우후. I love it! Ready? 음음어음이 맛에 닭볶음탕을 먹는 거야 <웃음> 음 너무 맛있다 음 감자가 진짜 너무 맛있어 포근포근질 작살나. 음. There are so many things I have to show you guys. <웃음> 그리고 이 국물은 또 그렇게 밥에 또잘 어울려요. 이거 밥에 또 끼얹어서 먹어줘야 돼. Like this, pour it and give it a good mix. Like this. 음. 음. <웃음> 음. 맛있다. 네, 맛있다. 음. It's slightly different, but if you love the cookie, I'm sure you will love this. Try. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a good competition between jinta and tapokumta, like chicken breast and chicken thigh. All right, here's a scenario. You're stranded on an island all by yourself and can only eat one noodle dish for the rest of your life. What's your pick? Yeah, it's really hard to pick one because we need to choose the best of the best. But if I were you, I'll definitely pick this one.
Today, we are making jjajangmyeon. Yeah, the nice and thick black noodles that always come out on YouTube. But we're not gonna make a regular jjajangmyeon. It's bigger and fancier. And in my opinion, this is one of the greatest noodle dishes of all time. So if this is something you haven't tried before, you should give it a try. Trust me, you won't regret it. For this, you will need onion, green onion, butter mushroom, garlic chives, ginger, shrimp, squid, pork, and chunjang, black bean paste. Since I want to make this a little fancier, I'm using a lot of stuff. But as long as you have pork, black bean paste, onion, and green onion, you'll be fine. So don't worry about it. First, let's prepare the black bean paste, which is the most important ingredient for jjajangmyeon. When you go shopping for this, you should grab a Korean product. And sadly, there's no substitute. So you gotta make sure there's Korean written on it. If you use products from other countries, I can't guarantee that's gonna be delicious. And probably something weird weird will come out. I told you already. So if that happens, I'm not responsible. All right, in a cold pan or wok, add half a cup of vegetable oil, one cup or 250 grams of black bean paste and place it over medium heat. And then we're gonna fry this for about two minutes and make sure to keep stirring it. In this step, the black bean paste can stick on the bottom. So I highly recommend using a non-stick pan. If it scorches on the bottom because you didn't use it, I'm not responsible. When you see the bubbles in the middle, give it about 30 seconds to one minute and that's pretty much it. It's been going well without any troubles, nothing crazy, congratulations, you're almost there. Here, some of you might think it's too much, but don't worry about it. Once it's completely cooled down, you can keep this in the fridge, and it should be fine for up to two weeks. So try to make a lot of different things with this, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna make this jjajangmyeon over and over again, because it's too delicious. Now let's prep some vegetables. First, finely minced 4 grams of ginger. Since it's a small amount of ginger, you might wanna skip it. But if I were you, I wouldn't do that. Because this teeny tiny amount of ginger will make a huge difference in taste. Next, onion. You can cut this any way you like. Big or small doesn't really matter. So you can't even slice it if you want. But since I have a strict judge who really cares about texture, I'm gonna chop it into nice big chunks. Still cold out there. I don't wanna slip on the street. And then chop some green onion into small pieces. A lot of recipes say you need different types of vegetables, such as zucchini, carrot, and cabbage. But I dare say you don't really need them. Trust me, what really affects the taste of jjajangmyeon is onion and green onion. That's it. This time, grab a handful of garlic chives and cut them into long strips. If it's difficult to get this, you can use bok choy instead. Or it's more of an aesthetic thing, so you can skip it. No problem at all. Now, let's move on to the mushrooms. I'm gonna cut 6 button mushrooms into quarters. Just like chives, it's not necessary either. But obviously, this bad boy will make your jjajangmyeon a little more fancier. So if you have some leftover mushrooms, bring them all. And then cut some pork belly into nice bite-sized pieces. You could use pork legs, shoulder, or anything you have. But make sure it's a nice fatty cut. Because fat makes everything taste better. That's why I always use pork belly. But in Korea, restaurants don't use this for jjajangmyeon. Why? Because it's quite expensive here. But I think it's not that expensive where you live, so give it a try. Then you will definitely meet more delicious jjajangmyeon. Alright, you guys remember I always say green makes your food look fancy? Do you remember that? But there's one more thing that does the same thing, that is seafood. Alright, let's say you order pad thai at a Thai restaurant. If there's shrimp or seafood in it, it's more expensive than other protein, right? For that reason, I brought this squid and shrimp. At this point, some of you might say, what? Frozen seafood? They're too fishy. Yeah, sometimes. But don't worry about it. If you blanch it in hot water like this, you won't taste fishy. If you could have a big big fire just like a Chinese restaurant, you don't have to do this. But if you just add it right into the frying pan and make a stir fry, then... I don't want to talk about it. It's your choice, but don't complain to me. All right, we're set. Let's get cooking. Put two tablespoons of oil in a wok. It doesn't have to be new. You can use the one that you fried black bean paste with. Don't waste. Save the environment. And then add one tablespoon of lard and heat it over medium heat. Lard is totally optional, but I'll say this guy will take it to the next level. Once it's nice and hot, add in the pork belly and let it cook for about two to three minutes. The goal here is to render out the fat so that all the great flavor from the pork comes out to the oil. Yes, this is the restaurant secret. 
You're welcome. When the pork is nicely browned, add the ginger and stir fry that for about 30 seconds. And then add 1 tablespoon of soy sauce and give it a good stir for another 1 minute. Here, please be careful because the oil will be hot and it could splash back on you. But still, this step will give you that amazing fragrance. So it will be totally worth it. High risk, high return. Now, increase the heat to high, add in your onions, green onions, and stir fry for about 2 minutes or until they are slightly soft. And then keep adding your seafood, 1 and a half tablespoons of sugar, 1 tablespoon of oyster sauce, 1 tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder, and stir fry for another 2 minutes. Lastly, add half a teaspoon of MSG as a secret weapon. Now, some of you might be thinking, what MSG? Alright, enough is enough. Today, I think I'm gonna have to put my foot down on this MSG. Jajangmyeon, without MSG, I don't like it. Because without it, it doesn't taste like a restaurant. Don't get me wrong, I love homemade stuff, but it just doesn't taste right to me. So if you wanna get that restaurant taste, I mean, something you had in Korea or Korea town, then please give it a try. Something magical will happen to you. MSG company, call me. I'm waiting for you. Now add 1 and a half tablespoons of fried black bean paste and stir it all together for about 2 minutes. You know what? I totally forgot to add the mushrooms. It is supposed to be put along with the seafood, but don't worry about it. It should be alright. And once everything is well coated, reduce the heat to medium, add half a cup of water, and bring it to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, carefully add the cornstarch slurry and give it a good stir. Alright, the sauce is done. Let's keep it warm until the noodles are ready. Here, some of you might say, Aaron, I can't get that jajangmyeon noodles. They don't sell it here. You know what? That amazing sauce works really great with any type of noodles, like kalguksu, soba, udon, or even pasta noodles. They're all fine, so just just make sure that you cook the noodles according to the package instructions. Don't worry about it. Everything will be fantastic. Now bring the sauce to a boil over high heat and add the drained noodles. And then quickly toss it around for about 1-2 to two minutes. Actually, you can just place the noodles in a bowl and pour the sauce you made. But if you stir fry everything like this, it will become more special. That's why it's more expensive than regular jajangmyeon. Once everything is well incorporated, turn the heat off. And strain some garlic chives, 1 tablespoon of toasted sesame oil, and just give it a final mix. Now all we have left is transfer it to a serving plate. That's it. But if you want to make it prettier, then add some sliced cucumbers. See? Green always makes your food look fancy. Alright, it's done. Let's go to our taste tester. Claire? This is something I always want to eat but didn't order. It usually comes in like this size, like two or three servings, and there's no way to finish it by myself. Plus, it's more expensive than regular jajangmyeon. So believe it or not, this is my first time to try this. Let's mix it! Ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 아, 짜장면 소스는 진짜 감칠맛 최고인 것 같아. 향이 너무 좋고 약간은 짭조름하면서도 또 되게 기분 좋은 단맛이 있어가지고 입맛을 확 끌어주는 것 같아. 너무 맛있는데? 음. 음. 음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음음
But don't get me wrong, it's delicious. You must be craving some nice and heartwarming stew. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure you don't want to cook all day for this sip of soup. But don't worry about it. If you invest just 10 minutes, you're gonna taste the best Korean stew that you ever had. All right, are you guys ready? Let's get started. Today, we are making kimchi jjigae, one of the most popular Korean stews. And as always, I'm gonna show you two versions, the authentic one and a super simple version. Although I'm gonna share a super simple version, the authentic one is not hard to make or time consuming. So unless you're like super busy to save the world, I strongly recommend the first one. Alright, let's start with the authentic version. For this, you will need green onion, onion, chili pepper, tofu, pork, and of course kimchi. Before we start cooking, we need to talk about a few things here. First, you gotta use well fermented kimchi. I dare say, no one can make good kimchi stew with freshly made kimchi. Maybe I could, but that's like an absolute truth or something. So if you just bought it from supermarkets, please wait until it gets a little bit sour. I told you already, so if you mess up with freshly made kimchi, I'm not responsible. Second, meat. Today, I'm using pork belly, because the fat in each layer will make your broth flavorful. What? You don't have this at the moment? Don't worry about it. You can use other parts like pork shoulder or leg. As long as it has enough fat in it, you'll be fine. Alright, let's prep some vegetables. First, slice some onion into thin strips. Next, chop some green onion into small pieces. If you cut it diagonally like this, that will make your dish more beautiful like a restaurant. And then the same thing goes for the chili peppers. Just cut them diagonally. Actually, these guys are more of an aesthetic thing. So if you don't have them, just skip them. No problem at all. After that, cut some tofu into nice big chunks and set them aside. Now it's time to prep our stir ingredient. Kimchi. Cut 300 grams of well fermented kimchi into nice bite sized pieces. Here, if you don't have another cutting board only for kimchi, just put it in a bowl and cut it with scissors. Otherwise, because of kimchi stains on the cutting board, it can guarantee your safety from your mom. You know what I'm talking about. And then chop 150 grams of pork belly into bite sized pieces. If you don't care about the texture and just want to make it faster, then you can actually use ground pork. But since I have a hungry bird at home, who really cares about texture, there's nothing much I can do about it. I really want to live longer. Now, let's move on to the seasoning paste. Put 1 tablespoon of Korean chili pepper flakes, half a tablespoon of soy sauce, half a tablespoon of fish sauce, half a tablespoon of minced garlic, and give it a good mix. I know some of you might be worried because of fish sauce, but don't worry about it. You know what? If you know how much fish sauce is in your favorite kimchi, you're gonna be freaked out. So just follow my lead. You're gonna be okay with this teeny tiny amount of fish sauce. Trust me, that's gonna be only full of umami. No fish taste at all. Alright, everything is all set. Let's get cooking. Take out a wok or a pot. Place it over medium heat and add a half a tablespoon of neutral tasting oil. Once it gets nice and hot, Add in the pork belly. Here, you don't have to cook too long until it gets crispy. We just want to render out the fat and get a little bit of a color. So it should be about 3 minutes. And here, I know it smells really nice. So you'll be tempted to eat this. But please don't. Once you have a bite, you can't stop yourself and notice there's nothing left. It's not a Korean barbecue episode. Let's do it later. Now into this beautiful fat, throw in some kimchi and the seasoning paste. We're gonna stir this around for about 6 minutes. Here, you should keep stirring it because chili pepper flakes are so easy to burn. What? It's burned already? Sorry about that. There's nothing much I can do about it. So please be careful. The next step is totally optional. But if you wanna make it extra delicious, add 1 tablespoon of lard. Trust me, it will make you feel like you're at a Korean restaurant. Oh, it will. Once it's completely wilted down, add 2 cups of water and a few shakes of black pepper. But instead of just plain water, I'm gonna use 2 cups of rice water that I got from rinsing the rice. Then because of the starch, it's gonna taste better, but not that much. Now place it over medium high heat and cook for another 10 minutes. And then add half a tablespoon of Tashida, Korean beef stock powder. What? You never tried it? Trust me, it will make it so much better. So you might feel like you just found out the secret weapon of Korean 
convenient restaurants. And just like any other soup or stew, the longer you boil it, the better it's going to be. So 10 minutes is just a minimum time. If you boil it for like 20 or 30 minutes, the pork is gonna let out more of that fat and it's gonna make it more flavorful. But just make sure you add more water so it doesn't all evaporate. Now I'm gonna transfer it to a tukbegi, Korean clay pot. Of course you can just finish it in a pot and serve it in a bowl. But if you want more authentic vibes, this bad boy is a must. Once that's done, add some tofu, onions, green onions, chili peppers, and cook over medium heat for about 3 minutes or until it's bubbling hot. Alright, it's done. What? You wanna make it more pretty? Then finish it up with a half a teaspoon of Korean chili pepper flakes. See? It looks way better. Alright, let's go to our taste tester. Claire? Oh my gosh! The sizzling sound makes me crazy. Mmm! <laughs> ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
음그 참치에서 나오는 그 고소한 기름이 진짜 김치찌개를 되게 맛있게 만들어주는 것 같아요 이게 짧게 한다고 해서 돼지고기보다 못하다는 게 아니야 이거 그냥 다른 종류의 김치찌개야 그냥 이거 나름대로가 너무 맛있어 그래서 그냥 이건 취향 차인 것 같아 음. 나 그리고 꼭 이거 말해주고 싶었는데 참치 비리다고 싫어하는 사람들 이거 꼭 해봤으면 좋겠어 김치에 양념들이 탁 들어가는 순간 참치의 비린내가 싹 사라지거든 음. 그래서 나는 이거 너무 강력 추천 비린내 안 나고 너무 맛있어 I like it